Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog, a free site. RichardDwyer.co for my law firm site. Today is Tuesday, June the 15th, 2021. Let's talk about a person who got convicted of second degree murder. Uh, you might have come across this case on numerous crime shows. This person is supposed to have been one of the most notorious masterminds in recent memory, right? He's been in shows like Mastermind of Murder, for example, where they claim that this guy uh, started events that led to the murder of his wife, who had lupus. His name is Brian Hood. The purpose of this video is to argue that Brian Hood should not have been convicted of second-degree murder. Let's talk about it. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's just go through the facts. Let me point out too, this case is so significant that criminal profiler Candace DeLong on her show Facing Evil actually interviewed the shooter, Jennifer Reale who supposedly was manipulated by the guy she was having an affair with, Brian Hood, into killing Brian Hood's wife. Let's talk about the case. Brian Hood meets Jennifer Reale at a spa in their gym. Both are married to other people. Both are parents. Between the two of them, they have five kids in total. They start an affair. Now here, the stories diverge. Brian Hood claims that he ended the affair. Jennifer Reale claims that the affair never ended. She claims that Brian Hood asked her to kill his wife. He told her that his wife was in pain, had lupus, and that the Bible justified it. Brian Hood supposedly then started quoting the Bible to Jennifer Reale. Well, we now know from evidence presented at both of their trials and from Reale's confession that Jennifer Reale using an antique gun, an 1870-era Colt 45 Peacemaker that her husband owned, walked up to Brian Hood's wife, Diane Hood, after she left a lupus support meeting and shot her twice. According to an eyewitness, Jennifer Reale leaned over Diane's body to fire the last shot. Now at the time of the shooting, Reale was wearing a disguise. She was wearing a ski mask that she claims she received from Brian Hood that she admits to sewing after she received it to make it fit her. Let me point out, too, that in addition to the ski mask, Reale wore an army field jacket, military fatigue pants, and glove inserts. Now, you should know that Reale's husband at the time was in the U.S. military. The husband, upon being shown the clothes that the killer wore by the police, told the cops that the clothes could well be his. Now, you should know that before the murder, Brian Hood was on a camping trip with some friends. On the trip, and the guys were laughing. Brian Hood 
asked his friends to kill his wife. At the time, his friends thought he was joking. Well, Jennifer Reale and Brian Hood both went to trial and both were found guilty. Right? Reale gave a confession to the police. Reale, and that played against her in court. She also, of course, testified against Brian Hood at his trial. And it was her testimony that resulted in Brian Hood's conviction. Reale was found guilty at her trial of first-degree murder and of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. Now, this to me is important here. Reale attempted to plead an insanity defense, but the court rejected it. She also claimed an impaired mental condition. Now, Brian Hood was not found guilty of first-degree murder at his trial by his jury, but rather, curiously, he was found guilty of second-degree murder and conspiracy. You know, either Brian Hood manipulated Reale into killing his wife which should have resulted in a first-degree murder conviction, if you believe that narrative. Or he didn't. The idea that Brian Hood is the alleged mastermind of the crime and did not receive the first-degree murder conviction that the person he manipulated received seems odd to me. Now let's talk about why in my opinion, Brian Hood should have been acquitted. He should not have been convicted. And understand, I know this is a minority view, given the number of shows, crime shows, on ID and on Oxygen. And I'll have the link to an article by the Oxygen Network that talks about how Reale's husband looked at the military clothing and thought the clothing could be his. Right in the comment section of this YouTube video. So viewers can actually read that portion of the evidence, which I believe is significant for themselves. But let's talk about why Brian Hood, who, by the way, spent 27 years in prison before he was paroled. Reale spent 26 years was ill with pancreatic cancer, was allowed to go to a halfway house where she died a few months later. So understand, both people here spent more than 25 years of their lives in prison. Let's talk about why Brian Hood, in my opinion, should have been convicted. The evidence doesn't match Jennifer Reale's story. She admits that she sewed the ski mask to make it fit her, yet claims she received it from Brian Hood. That doesn't strike me as believable. Right? There's no evidence that I know of that she received the ski mask from Brian Hood. Now, according to Oxygen Network, and again, the link is in my comment section here on YouTube. Reale's military husband thought the military clothes that she wore when she did the killing could have been his. Understand, the police actually find some hairs on the clothing, and the hairs match the Reale's dog. Right? They examine the clothing. Yet, Reale con contends that she received the military outfit from Brian Hood. Here again, there's no evidence that would support this. Keep in mind, too, that Hood, 
Who's 6'3", not 5'6". Right? He couldn't lend her some military clothes that he had. Hood's an insurance salesman. He wasn't in the military at the time of the murder. Let me say that the evidence is simply not there, in my opinion, that Reale received anything used in the murder from Brian Hood. For example, it has been proven from ballistics that the murder weapon was her husband's 1870s era gun. I find it odd that Brian Hood would ask a woman he's having an affair with to kill his wife and wouldn't give her the murder weapon to do so. It's even worse than that. She uses an easily traceable gun, one that's unique, one that's from the 19th century, that her husband, who collects antique guns, happens to have. Let's also point out again that Jennifer Reale pursued an insanity defense. This was her doing, right? And a mental impairment defense. Understand, Reale advised the court that she was either insane or mentally impaired. Well, folks, that's what Brian Hood's defense team was arguing to the court that Reale was mentally unbalanced, she was a former jilted lover, and that this was a fatal attraction situation. Folks, that's consistent with what Reale herself was claiming in court. Right? She told the court she wasn't thinking clearly at the time of the murder. Finally, Brian Hood's camping trip, his banter with his friends, in which he jokingly asked that someone kill his wife, may well have been serious. Right? Let's buy into the narrative here for a moment. Let's say that Brian Hood is with some friends. They think he's joking. Right? They think he's joking. And he asks them to kill his wife. Let's say that Brian Hood is privately serious. Well, I would argue that that by itself, without some proof that he provided the means for his mistress to kill his wife, Right? This by itself is not enough to convict him of murder. It's too muddy. The state has to prove his criminal offense beyond a reasonable doubt. Understand, too, even solicitation. His friends thought he was joking. Guys were laughing. There's a question on whether he was serious. Let's just say the fact that his friends didn't think he was serious shows you that they had reasonable doubts that he was serious. So in sum, and again, I know this case has been spotlighted on a Candace DeLong show where she interviews Jennifer Reale while Reale, while Reale was alive. I understand that Brian Hood is supposed to have been a mastermind of murder. That you've heard about this show, uh, this situation, on numerous shows where Brian Hood is painted as some puppeteer, some guy who quoted the Bible to get his mistress to murder his wife. But in some, at least in my opinion, 
If there is no evidence other than the supposedly insane, according to her, shooter's claims that her boyfriend, Brian Hood, gave her the murder weapon, gave her the military murder clothes, or gave her the ski mask that she herself admits that she sewed, then there simply isn't enough here to convict Brian Hood of first or second degree murder. There's just not enough. Understand, it's very telling that the prosecution doesn't even have a theory on how Brian Hood is supposed to have gotten the military clothes that he supposedly gave Reale that Reale's own husband thinks might have been his clothes. Right? If Reale is lying about how she got the clothes she wore, when she did the murder using her husband's gun, wearing the ski mask that she herself sewed, then isn't she an unreliable witness? Would you want to rely on her testimony when she herself tells you that she was insane? To convict anyone of murder, as unpopular as this is, and I understand I'm here online talking about the paucity of evidence in cases where the defendant is unpopular, right? The Judith Hawkey case, where she's getting an early release. The Scott Peterson case, where the state is not going to pursue the death penalty in a retrial, right? They're not. Well, here is the Brian Hood case. Folks, in my opinion, the evidence is simply not there. Let me hear from you. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.